Uh, welcome to Real Estate News. This is when we get together once a week and just talk about what we're seeing and strategies. And today we're going to talk about what the best way is to price your home in a, in a market like this. But we got to start out by saying that Ruby is not here today. She's not feeling well. And what a kawinky dink that is, that it's the day after the office Christmas party, huh? Monthly average sales price per square foot is coming down. Now, this can be kind of a confusing chart because I also saw one where it's kind of turn around and coming up. And one where it actually came up quite a bit was Sun City, but it's the average. So that just means a few more of the homes that were higher priced probably moved up there, but we're coming down. We're down about 11%. So for those that are wanting a 20% decline, we're just about there. I suppose if we were to look at a trend line like this, where real estate was going on average, and you know, Pat, tell me if I'm very far off, but if I went like to there, mm -hmm. wouldn't that make this section right here kind of get us back to baseline, which is about $241 a square foot? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Trend That'd be wise. very simple analysis trend-wise. So whether or not we're headed there or not is anybody's guess. And talk about guessing. As we've said, before we get into how to price your home, we got to look at what all the big dogs say. And here's real estate prediction season. I'm going to blow this one up just a little bit. And the big dogs, Realtor.com says we're going to be up 5.4%. Redfin says we're going to be down 4%. And uh, Wells Fargo down 3.1%. Zillow kind of flat, up about 0.8%. So what did Zillow say last year? They said housing will climb 14% in 2022. So they were right about half the year, and then it fell off the wagon. And... They lost what seven hundred million last year. So yeah. So as you look at them and you look at their predictions, just keep that in the back of your head. So now let's go to Redfin last year. What did they say? Prediction number one: mortgage rates will rise to ooh three point six percent, bringing price growth down to earth. Prediction number two: new listings will hit ten year high, which will hardly make a dent in the ongoing supply shortage. Not sure about that. Rents will increase by 7%. Uh, they did, but now they're coming down. And uh, home buyers will relocate to affordable cities like Columbus, Ohio, Indianapolis, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, over the Sun Belt. I don't think so, especially with the big chip plant we got coming in here with Taiwan. And here's an interesting one on recoveries from recessions. Killer Chase, Case Schiller, National. So back here. From 1977, it took until uh, 6.5 years to get back to its peak. And then in 91, it took 11 years. And it took 14 years for us to recover from the big the big crash in 08. So as we come have hit a peak here, how long will it take us to get back to this peak? Probably takes us back to that other chart that I showed you. It's going to take some time. So. So anyway, I thought I'd share that with you and kind of tee that up and, and uh, uh, quiet week in rates. Right, Pat? Yeah, it has been, actually. I mean, we got this morning, you can tell that the uh, Treasury has been kind of jockeying around the last uh, this morning. Um, you know, it's down 33. The five and a half coupon is down 33 basis points, but uh, it was up nine basis points. So it's been doing some jockeying around here. But if I could blow this up a little bit. Um, you can see this is the bond prices and not rates, but the inverted, you know, inversion. Um, this is that day we had November 10th. And you can see where, you know, from a technical basis, it's kind of interesting watching this. It's it's pretty, it's fairly predictable sometimes in, in the short term where you see this. Right now, this is uh, 108. There's a ceiling. There was a ceiling here. You see these trend lines, all these little lines here. The, these are all different types of resistance when you're going up, or it could be a floor. And uh, you can see where, you know, there's resistance at one, like 100 and 158. I mean, we're at 101 right now. So when it busted out here, you can see that bust out. It went through that resistance line. Now this this resistance line, right? Or this is a floor. Now you can see how it's kind of the rates are just okay. kind of sitting there on this floor. So, but the PPI is coming out tomorrow. Um, that's why we're seeing some jockeying around. And the next, that's going to be a big, 
number to look at. Uh, you know, I think that if they, it comes in softer, you can see a positive reaction with rates. Now the PPI is a producer price index. Yeah, producer price index. Yeah, and then the CPI numbers are coming out next Tuesday, and then you got the Fed's meeting. You know, I think it's uh, on Wednesday. So next week's going to be a big week in terms of rates. And, you know, obviously Barry Habib, who I've been following, he's been the main guy that I follow. And um, he's been pretty correct. He says, if we see some subdued inflation numbers. He goes, you might see rates improve here. Now there's some room. And if they improve right here, these lines, this is providing a, you can see where this day right here is, like you said, um, and hopefully you can see it. I'll blow it up a little further, but it's, it's amazing how these these resistance signs create a ceiling and you get that floor because if we see a if we see a positive reaction or a positive you know subdued numbers inflation you know you might see it bust through this ceiling and he says you got room to go from 101.69 almost a point higher so that would probably drop rate i mean that could you know drop rates quarter point give or take so so you don't get your dollar until Q1. Both yeah, I know. You can, I know. So we can have a little sucker rally here, but you don't oh, get shoot. your dollar unless it's between January and March. So end of March. I was pricing. Okay. Well, I, I'll wait for it. I, I mean, I'll, I'll put Christmas on hold until I get it. But um, <laughs> they, don't forget, uh, I'm in this with Pat. I know. The only reason I don't have two dollars taped up there is I only have a five in my wallet. So I'll go out and <laughs> get one and get the. So, but uh, yes, you have, it, uh, you have to put you have you have to put yourself on. Uh, uh, oh, Ruby's jumping in, my, or not Ruby, but the Jackie's jumping in my boat. Okay, no, he's just riding on my <laughs> coattails. Okay, well, I'm gonna hey. win two bucks. Is the way I look at it. So yeah, okay. So well, I, you know, just yesterday, I was pricing, just yesterday I was pricing out a conventional. Um, at five nine nine, with the co buy down cost of about twenty five hundred dollars at five nine nine. So well, that's not bad. So, not relatively speaking, yeah, you know, because you know what happens when uh, when interest rates go all the way up to three point six percent. Just ask Redfin. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, but yeah, so we got the BP, you know get the numbers coming out PPI tomorrow. Get the CPI on Tuesday. Get the Fed. So it's gonna be a pretty active uh, next week. Cool. Um, so that begs the question. So, um, you know, November and December is slow. There's just, it's just slow. And uh, we've been busy, Rick. Well, but I mean, statistically, you know, yeah. if we look at, you know, we're still only at 2,200 homes. And it's amazing when I look at the seven day moving average, how it just, it always springs back to what was, what was the norm. And here it is, you know, mm -hmm. we had our Thanksgiving dip and now we're back at 2,200 again. This is still trending down. And uh, so um, when, when we're looking at this and we're now we're getting ready to put listings on in January, Jackie, how do we, how do you comp these? How do we determine the asking price for the home and helping? Now, agents don't determine the asking price. I want to be very clear on that. We sit with sellers and go, here's what we see. What do you think? Here's what I think. And we share the numbers so what what approach should we be taking well and it's quite different than it used to be i mean you know when we used to sit down with the seller to price um pri help them price their home and you're right they they determine the price but they also rely on us for the guidance um we used to sit down and look <clears throat> primarily at three month comps and then sometimes go all the way back to six months if we were looking at something that uh, there was a lack of sales in the area. I used to actually teach comps years ago. Um, and then, you know, we would start within 200 square feet above and below, five years above and below. And then we would, you know, stay within, we would always search by book and map number, which is the first three and the second two um, numbers of the assessor's number, and that's how a lot of appraisers will look at it. And then you could expand out from there if you had a lack of comps. Now, when we sit down with sellers, we're having to basically throw all the sold comps out the window. Forget it. It doesn't matter. Um, we're having to look basically more, put more weight on what's under contract and what's pending. And, um, you know, our criteria, here's the thing, you 
two, the last two years, you could have a home that might need some repairs. You, people went in with their cell phones and took pictures. You have got to step your game up right now. It's got to be professional photos, drones, depending on the property. Um, you got to be really super tight on those comps and stay, you know, with just the pending and the under contract. It's okay to look at the solds and you still need to look at the solds because the appraisers are going to analyze those. But it, it's just a completely different market than it was even three, four months ago. Yeah, I and I agree. And I think you're absolutely right that agents need to step their game up because, and you, and, you know, some people are afraid that, Oh, don't, don't show the whole house. Um, and you really don't need to, you don't need to show every bathroom, but you really got to have a good profile photo to attract people to the home. But you also, like you said, comping now, it doesn't matter what the house sold down the street two months ago. No. And the people look at that. My neighbor got this. Well, we went down 4% in November. Mm -hmm. So, so do you go back and look and go, okay, your neighbor got 500 um, and we've dropped in October and we've dropped 4%. Right. It's very identical to your home. We should probably be four to 6% lower than what they had. Would that be a decent way to look at it? Absolutely. And the, the number one thing I always tell my clients right now is we do not want to chase the market. The buyer is going to determine the value. So if we are priced appropriately, there's a good chance our showings are, are going to be good. And there's still that high possibility where we might get multiple offers. I'm seeing it on the homes that are priced well. And you'll do better pricing it appropriately than you will if you overprice it and have to keep doing these price reductions. And it's amazing to me, even with how the market is now, there's so many agents out there. I can't reach them on the phone. They're still taking cell phone pictures the descriptions they have. I mean, you've got to sell that home online and grab people's attention to get them in the house. And it, and it works not just, just to the buyers, but also the agents. So the verbiage you're putting in there, the photos you're putting in there, you've got to tell a story, the layout of the photos. I, I think that's super important. I mean, I see people where they'll just like throw the photos in and there's no rhyme or reason. You, oh, you've not, got only to that, a... not only that, but you read the descriptions and the descriptions are the image number. Instead of living room, <laughs> we'll say image 0564 JPG. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Not that that really matters that much, but it's kind of like the devil in the details. But I agree with you on, on, uh, I think it People does because I mean, I look at pictures and you know, you want to know if that's a second you know, bedroom or you know, what is that or master or I mean, it definitely helps putting the description in. I noticed that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I spend a lack of doing that and you know, and Red Hog Media, who's one of our sponsors here, we um, they actually will put those in there for you. Um, they'll write your descriptions on your um, um, as they upload the photos. I mean, there's an extra fee to it, but they will they'll they'll put the photos in and they will label them and they'll put them in the correct order and they'll you know so they have a lot of different packages. So I highly recommend them. They're Red Hog Media. And if you they're fabulous. Go into their promo code um, and put in Rick Helps. She get ten percent off. Yeah, she won um, kind of an Entrepreneur of the Year award in the Scottsdale Real Estate Association. So well, that's that was, awesome. That was pretty cool. Uh, you know but what? I I... It becomes more and more important right now to do that. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, what I really love about them too is that they've actually um, got a report that you can set it up that it sends it to the seller, showing the activity that's coming looking at the house it's it's nice have you seen that i have yeah i've used it a lot i think uh um it anything that you can keep showing the seller is is key so when you go in and you put um now it used to be when the market was really hot that putting a market on thursday was great so that people could put uh put it on their schedule for friday and saturday to, to look at or sunday and but that's not nearly as important right now is it you know I don't know. I kind of debate on that one. So um, I've always believed Wednesdays and Thursdays were the, st the most important days. When the market was super hot, you could put the mar put the home on the market anytime. Yeah. I, I kind of debate that a little bit, Rick, because now I think it's more important again to be um, very strategic of when you're placing it on the market. So I've always found Wednesday and Thursday afternoons because it's going to show as a new listing for three days. Same thing with the price adjustment. 
Um, you know, we're one of those ones that are guilty just to do a hundred dollar price reduction just to refresh it for the weekend, yeah. but it works and it yeah. does pop it back out there. And I know some people totally disagree with that, but I've, I've always found it works for us. Does make it show up. I know that I'm looking at still again at open door properties like Crawford well, reports that they're not called I buyers anymore. Right now they're I sellers. Um, yeah. And yeah. I can't find a pattern in their price reductions. I can't find one that says, well, after 45 days, they go down by this one. I'm looking yeah. at one right now that is uh, has been on the market a half a year. And uh, I'm waiting for something. So we're, uh, we're, we're about just to go ahead and shoot them where we want to be. Like I always say, don't wait for them to come to you. We need to come to them. But then the other part is when you're a seller and you get an offer, Pat, um, do you get a lot of phone calls from agents before they decide to accept the offer, want to know the status of the buyer? Oh, yeah. I see nine, eight out of 10, nine out of 10 times. Well, typically, I try to reach out to them beforehand. So it look, makes you look pro, you know, proactive. Um, that you're not just sitting in your hands. So yeah, it definitely does help. And, they, you know, they try to dig for information. But, you know, I'm really at liberty to only give them so much information because it's not their business with their credit, you know, some personal, you cannot disclose somebody's personal credit score. Um, Do agents actually ask you that? Oh yeah. All the time. Oh my gosh. All the time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm like, we always ask my, my question back to them is, <laughs> would you want me disseminating your credit score back to out to anybody? Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> so <laughs> I throw it right back at them. You know, what I like to look for is, Yes, I have looked at all the documents. Um, they do have the down payment. Um, their, their employment history is solid. And uh, this should be a pretty clean file. Sometimes you can pick up on things that make you go, ooh. Like yeah. we had one that just recently, uh, and after all the back and forth they had, the, my seller, who's really bright, said, I think they can't qualify for the loan. That's why they were trying to pull our price down. And I agreed. So I think, uh, and it was in a very aggressive price point in the 300s. But um, so how long do you give it, Jackie, when you've set a price and uh, what kind of activity and what are your expectations before you pull the plug on that listing price? So especially in this market, and, and sometimes sellers don't always agree with us and they have the right to choose the price. And so we have that conversation because I always tell people, okay, my job is to guide you give you the best possible advice that's out there so that you can make the best decision. But I completely respect that somebody has got a price in their head and, you know, I'll, I'll try to bring them to where we need to be, but I completely respect, but I will have that conversation with them because we're going to do a, a lot of investment in time and money to get that listing up. I will, I will work with them on their price, but I ask for a two week commitment. So two weeks, if we're not seeing the activity that we need to see and given we, you know, I will actually take the time, call some of the agents in the area that have other listings. What kind of activity are you getting? We're not going into this blindly. So I'm able to let them know when we're sitting down to do the listing and we're going over everything and making those decisions. This is the kind of activity that's happening in this neighborhood right now, because there's some areas it's normal to have maybe one showing a week. Other areas, that's not normal, but I need to know that. So, and my client needs to know that. So two weeks, we'll try the price for two weeks. And every two weeks, we need to have a conversation based off the feedback and the activity that we're getting. Because again, you don't want to sit there for a month and then chase the market down. You need to stay ahead of it right now. Yeah, time is uh, is your killer when it comes to listing a home. And, and uh, um, but we're going through this stage now where we were very disappointed if we didn't have foot traffic on the first weekend. And now we're disappointed if nobody's come the first week. Um, right. So, and that might, like you said, might be normal for that neighborhood at the time. Um, yeah, it's important we, to know that. Yeah, yeah. So like, you know, the phone's not going to ring off the hook right now. So all eyes are on January. Actually, all eyes are on next week, Pat. The pressure's on you, um, you know, as we're looking for this uh, this data coming in. It's going to be very interesting to see if it breaks through that uh, ceiling that you have. And uh, and then we'll watch and see how long it stays there. If so, the the CPI is going to have to come in lower. Uh, the consumer price, the CPI, is going to have to come in lower in order for us to see that kind of a breakout. And the anticipations 
the anticipation is they are going to come in lower. Um, so year over year. Yeah. Year over year comparisons. Yeah. Yeah. So, so. we'll see. Are they going to, um, there's a lot of pivot talk, but, um, you, you know, we can drive ourselves crazy trying to figure all that stuff out and analyze it. I, I let you do that. And then I just tell you whether or not I want to bet you a dollar. So that's <laughs> a- <laughs> we'll see. All right. Well, thanks yeah, everybody. More news yes. Have a great weekend. We'll be on live at three o'clock tomorrow. Be able to talk specifically about that and then get warmed up for next week. So have a yep. great one. Have a fantastic weekend. Take care. Take care. Bye. Bye.